everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. We are so excited today. We have a treat, a very special interview for you all today. And I'm film critic Rachel Wagner and Jess is here. Hi, everybody. And today we have Squire and Louise Rushnell here, and they are the team behind the Godwinks franchise, I guess you could say. Uh, They're the creators of Godwinks. And we're so delighted to talk with both of you. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Well, thank you, Rachel and Jess. Yeah, yeah. we're so excited to be here. You yep. know, we love Hallmark. We love all the Hallmark movies, but especially the Godwink one. Oh, yeah. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you both introduce yourself to our audience? Okay. I think it should be ladies first. Okay. Well, no, because we have our little nickname for our, that people call us. Oh, okay. Right. So, so okay. So, <laughs> so I am Squire. And I'm Louise and known as Squeeze. Squeeze. <laughs> How cute is that? Okay. It's disgusting. Come on. I know, but everyone on people Martha's Vineyard. throw up all I know, over the world. But yeah. you know, we live on Martha's Vineyard <laughs> and no matter where we go, people say, hi, Squeeze. Hi, yep. Squeeze. So, because we're yep. never, we're never apart. We're never apart. No. And we just, uh, we squeeze together everywhere. Okay. <laughs> Look at it. There we are. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so who are we? Um, well, my background is a uh, primarily a television executive. I was at ABC for 20 years. And, um, and then uh, uh, for six years after that, I was the CEO of a, of a cable channel. And uh, then I really wanted to become a, an author speaker. <clears throat> and my, my wonderful wife uh, gave me the opportunity to do that because she was doing very, very well on the road with Tim Conway and Harvey Corman. And let me let you <laughs> take it from there. For maybe some of the audience might not remember the Carol Burnett show, but oh, Tim yes. Conway and Harvey <laughs> Corman. Okay. So they are icons in comedy. Yeah. So I was blessed and it was a total God wink, yeah. but they were looking mm. for, to be put it bluntly, they were looking to go on the road, Tim and Harvey and do the famous sketches, but they were kind of looking for an inexpensive Carol Burnett. And so they were looking at videos of everyone. And I have no idea to this day how my video landed in Tim Conway's on his desk. And of all the hundreds of videos, it was the one that was on top. He took the first one, looked at it and said, I called his wife over and he said, what do you think of this girl? And she said, I think you should hire her. And that's how my career started with Tim Conway and Harvey Corman. We did now, if there was a... Uh... A chime, a Godwink chime, we would hear ring. Wait a minute, don't we have, where's the bell? Okay. No, that's, those are bells. That's different well, than the chime. Well, can we do the bell though? Oh, well, we could do, do a little the bell. bell. Yeah, we, whenever we, yeah. Because uh, we have to tell you about the bells. All right, we'll okay. tell you about that. All right. So, <laughs> anyway, so, um, so I was on the road with them for 12 years. Wow. And it was just the greatest gig of my life. So Squire would travel with me and he would write his Godwink books. As long so, as I get up at 4.30 in the morning, it doesn't matter where I am as long as yeah. I'm writing, yeah. okay? So it worked out, it was like perfect. Yeah. That's yeah. how God works, Yeah, perfection. But you know, we, um, uh, the Godwink stories, the Godwink idea really began uh, just about 20 years ago uh, before 9-11. The first book came out just before 9-11. How auspicious is that? A book of hope at a time, at that time in America. And it was called When God Winks. And so it introduced that new word to the language, uh, God wink. And so people would say, I wonder what that means. I mean, what that is. And the moment people would get that word, and figure out that it was one of those little coincidences that's not a coincidence, but comes from divine origin somewhere up there. Mm -hmm. Then they knew that it was a word that they could use in their language and that fit within their language. And so that little word has been going out like Johnny Appleseed, you know, <laughs> spreading itself all over America and the world at this point. And uh, I never realized at that moment, at the beginning, I thought that that a God wink was just a, maybe an alternative word for coincidence. But if you look up coincidence in the dictionary, it talks about how two extraordinary things come together without apparent cause. Mm -hmm. Well, 
A God wink is different than that. A God wink is two extraordinary things coming together with a cause. Mm -hmm. It's a divine cause. Mm -hmm. And that cause will cross all boundaries, all languages, all, all ages, because kids are, are, are fascinated by God wink stories and their grandparents mm -hmm. and everybody in between. So that's how the God wink journey has actually begun. Were you always a sort of believer in the idea of God winks or is this something that you had to kind of be converted uh, to the idea? Well, we were, were, were uh, the praying partners. We yeah. pray all the time. Uh -huh. We read the word of God. And there is a wonderful scripture in Proverbs that says, in all your ways, acknowledge me and I shall direct your paths. And so that really is what a God wink is when we acknowledge that, you know, God is the creator of heaven and earth and everything in it. And that we're really on his GPS, God's positioning system, that he's always looking out for us. Then when we start opening up our eyes to see his hand upon our lives, we start seeing these these little, as some people would call coincidences that we call God wings because they're from a divine source, you start seeing these amazing things happen, lining up divine alignment. And, and when you, if you would write them on your refrigerator, you know, just in a little pad of paper, write it on your refrigerator and go back a month later, all the God wings that you had, you will see that there is a pattern to them. Yeah. It is truly remarkable. And so if you, even if you do an archaeological dig into your life, you'll see that along your path when you were a little girl or how you got a job or how you met your spouse or whatever, you will see that there were connections, divine connections, threads that God was threading this beautiful tapestry of your life all together. The fact of the matter is, is that everybody has God wings, mm -hmm. even if they haven't recognized them, haven't paid attention to them. But once you do understand what a God wink is, then you start seeing them more mm -hmm. and more and more. And we start every day anticipating God winks. Mm -hmm. We're looking for them because we know that they are going to be supernatural communications mm -hmm. that are just like when you were a little kid and you sat at the big Thanksgiving table. Think about that moment. Maybe it was the first time you got to sit at the big people with all <laughs> at the big table with all the big people. And you, you know, you were a little out of place. You felt a little scared. You felt a little uncertain like we all do in life. And you looked up and you saw somebody looking back at you. Maybe it was mom or dad or grandpa. And they gave you a little silent communication. It was just a little wink. Now you never said, what do you mean by that? <laughs> you knew, you knew that it meant something special. It meant something like, hey kid, I'm thinking of you right now. Mm -hmm. Hey, kid, I love you. I'm proud of you. Mm -hmm. You're sitting here at the big table. Mm -hmm. And that is what a God wink is. It is somebody up there who is bigger than all of us who is saying, hey, kid, mm -hmm. I'm thinking of you right this minute. And that's mm -hmm. what a God wink is. And our message, our message is that because everybody has them, we just need to we need mm -hmm. to look for them. We need to find mm -hmm. them. We need to be open to them. A God wink is a gift that is left on your doorstep. We just ask you to go open the door mm -hmm. and open your gift. Yeah. And out of 8 <laughs> billion <laughs> people on the planet, it really is a person to person call just for you. That's how much God cares about us. And so when, you know, Hallmark and God winks is such a perfect match because the audience is so in tune to that, you know, they are open to that. And, and I, I really do believe because their hearts are so open to uh, spirituality that they see the God winks and they understand them perfectly. And one of the things that we get all the time from the God wink movies is the thing that people love the most, I think, is they say, I love when I see the photos of the real people, you know, yeah. because that makes me, know that gee if it happened for them it could happen for me yeah right it's not just a movie it's it's real right. life yeah um so how do you you know when you started making these movies for hallmark how did you choose which stories you wanted to tell out of all these because you knew you had the books you say so you have so many stories how did you kind of narrow down and decide which ones to well put into the movie? hallmark kind of does that for us we know <laughs> that it needs to be 
a love story. <laughs> and we know that it needs to have lots of snow, <laughs> lots of Christmas <laughs> decorations. And so we start, we start the process by uh, looking at our vast array of stories, well over 400, maybe 500 at this point, uh, that we could call upon. And we start looking for those stories that start fitting that hallmark theme. And, mm -hmm. um, and then what we do, um, and I think this is pretty typical of most networks, uh, you present three ideas for them to choose one. And maybe they'll love them and take all three, you know, but, <laughs> uh, but that's, that's basically how we put it together. We put together three incredible stories. Louise and I, we write the, the treatment, uh, that eight to 10 pages that lays out the stories that are in our books, um, that uh, are more thematic for a film so that they can the network can see the film kind of in their mind's eye unfolding and we just lay it out in those eight to ten pages and they pick the one that they want now when you were writing the books did people come to you with their godwing stories and say hey i had this incredible thing happen to me or do you sort of do you find them how does that all happen well, it happens all of the above yeah. <laughs> so often because Squire has a Godwink page on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So you've got how many people? So there it's now? almost 300,000. So it's yeah. about 300,000. So people will share their Godwink stories. And and it's interesting. There was um, uh, we, we also have a book called Dog Winks. So it's all dog stories. So with Godwinks, you know, but the dog is the center in the middle. Mm -hmm. So there was one time. Uh, we just come up with the idea of dog winks and we thought, well, we're going to write this book, but where are we going to get the stories about dogs? And I go on Squire's Facebook post and right there, someone says, hey, there's a great story about this dog and a canine officer, hero dog in Providence, Rhode Island. It's in the Providence Journal. You should take a look at it. It's a real God wink. And we did. And it was the most amazing story. And now Netflix is doing that as a film that will that will come out in February called mm -hmm. Rescued oh, by wow. Ruby. So yeah. so we get them on his Facebook and I have a, a Facebook post called God Winkers, which is more spiritual. It's more people pray for each other. And it's just mm -hmm. it's just a beautiful it turned out. It just was what the Lord wanted us to do we didn't realize at the time i thought we just get godwing stories but more a lot of prayer requests but godwing stories there too so they come on facebook but then you know now they know we're the godwing couple so people will call us up and say hey you should hear this godwing story so they know that we're out there and that's right. how we get a lot of the stories mm -hmm. yeah so what do you say to people who say i sure could have used a godwink in this thing that happened to me, this, why, what, what would be your kind of, what would you say to some, like, I had this really hard time in my life. I sure could have used it there. What would you say to yeah. someone like that? Interesting because people have asked us this, how do I get, there are some people get God winks all the time and call them like God wink magnets, you know, and they <laughs> said, how do, how do I get more God winks? Well, there was a, there was a great um, evangelist. Yes. Named in 1650. Yes. His name was Sir William Temple. And he said, when I pray, God winks happen. When I don't, they don't. Actually, the word he used because he didn't know that word God wink yet. It hadn't been invented. He said, <laughs> when I pray, coincidences, coincidences happen. happen. When I don't, <laughs> they don't. So we tell people, pray. You know, yeah. um, God wants to give us the desires of our heart. So if we pray and just say to God, you know, God, I, I need to, to feel your presence. I need I need a God wink today. The thing is that, that God loves us so much and he wants to communicate with us. And, you know, most of us don't hear God like, hey, Louise, and I want you to do this. So how would he speak to us? Well, he would speak to us with these little God winks that happen along our path. Telling something us that's supernatural, that, yes. something that could have come from no other place, mm -hmm. no rational uh, ability to kind of say, uh, you, you know, that this should happen in this particular spot. And if, if it is um, an experience that you say 
wow about, or you say, what are the mathematical odds of that? Then you can be pretty certain that was a God way. But also even in the little things, like you might be thinking about an old friend you hadn't thought about in 10 years. And all of a sudden the phone rings, you pick it up and it's that person, you know, that happens all the time or someone, mm -hmm. especially when we get a lot of emails from people who've gotten God winks when they lose a loved one. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. whether it may be someone who they might say, my mom always loved roses. You know, she always loved her red roses and coming home from the funeral. And it was in December. And, and, and I saw this one red rose, you know, and I felt it was, it was such a comfort to know, you know, that God was thinking about me. So you get that all the time with flowers and birds and a lot with animals. And you know something? It's you, you really can't argue with somebody about their God wink. Mm -hmm. If that God wink happened to you That's right. and you feel that it was a special communication, a person to person call directly to you out of 8 billion people on the planet, just mm -hmm. for you mm -hmm. at that moment and connecting with you, who, who could possibly argue that? I mean, they could say, oh, you're crazy, whatever, whatever you know in your heart That's right. that it was something very special mm -hmm. just for you. Mm -hmm. That's really great. Absolutely. So you've done four of the, now with this new one, you've done four of the movies for Hallmark. Do you, mm -hmm. it's probably a sacrilege to say, but do you have a favorite? Yes. <laughs> the one we're working on, right? It's, it's, it's like our children. It's the one right. that's sitting on Can't our pick. lap. I know. That is our favorite. <laughs> well, this, this one, uh, God Went Christmas, uh, Miracle of Love, uh, is probably the biggest miracle, yeah. I think, of it, all of them. It is, no question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is the story of Joy and Eric. <clears throat> and it's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's beautifully acted by... Uh, Kat Burrell and Alberto Frenza. Um, Easy on the eyes. <laughs> yeah, as, uh, as, as Kathy Lee says, he's a hunk. Yes, you know? yes. <laughs> Kathy Lee's our executive producer on all okay. these. Yeah. Oh, great. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we wanted, we tried to rope her in to, to, to star. We, in fact, we wrote a, a role for her, uh, as we always do. <laughs> but, you know, the COVID uh, restrictions in were just Canada. a bit too onerous mm -hmm. to get her to sit into a hotel room yes. for two weeks yeah. by herself mm -hmm. in Canada before she went on the set. Mm -hmm. And so it, the timing just didn't work out. But in any case, uh, the, the actors, Kat and Alberto, uh, they're really wonderful together. And um, they, they, uh, they personify the story of joy and Eric in a, in a wonderful way. Mm -hmm. um, I can give you the, I can give you the, uh, the shorthand version of, I hope it'll be shorthand <laughs> of the, of the Eric and joy story. If you'd like to have me do that. Well, um, it's, it's kind of fun because a uh, cat played on her character on good, Witch was also named joy. So, oh, that God wink. there is a God <laughs> wink we didn't know uh, we did not know you see hey. <laughs> and, and just before you I tell i knew she was on good witch but i, didn't I know, know i didn't that. know she played a lady named joy so before you tell this story i just have to tell you that one of the sweetest things that happened is we got the real joy and eric on a zoom call with their characters so Kat with Kat and, and alberto and so they got to ask them questions, the real Joy and Eric, some some things they, they wanted to know and just got to know them. And that was really, really you know, sweet. we've done that for the last three movies. Mm -hmm. And um, we we think going into this that it's going to be good for uh, the actors to get a sense of the real people before they start playing mm -hmm. these real people. Mm -hmm. And we think that maybe it's just a wonderful treat for uh, the real people to meet the actors mm -hmm. who are gonna be portraying them. And so here we are on Zoom, we have a, and, and it isn't a, as intimate as you'd think because we got our producer there, we got our the, head of the studio there, our director's there, mm -hmm. and Louise and I are here. And so we're now kind of putting this marriage together of the real and the, uh, and the personification uh, of the characters. And we find that everybody gains from this mm -hmm. experience. The, 
the obviously the director gains from the experience just observing the some of the dialogue and conversation mm -hmm. between the real people and the actors and and very often the actors will ask questions mm -hmm. that you might not have thought uh, in advance what what they might have been thinking about. For example, there was a, a, a one time when uh, when the actor knew he had a scene where he had to salute, and he had to salute like an officer and in in a police officer. And so he he wanted to ask the real person, well, how do you officially do that? Mm -hmm. You know, is it like this? Is it you know, like mm -hmm. two? Is it you know like this or, right. <laughs> or whatever? Mm -hmm. And and then you just get those kinds of conversations going between uh, between them all, and it's and it's just a treat. It's and just I a think wonderful because treat. it was a life threatening situation with Eric. Yeah, they really want to know like what what were you feeling? You know, because he had gone into a coma for a yeah. little while. And what, what was that like? Did you hear anybody? Do you, so they wanted, before they did that scene, he really wanted to get some information yeah. from Eric. You want to tell the story? Well, the Julie and Eric story, um, it isn't, it isn't in this book, is it? It's in the first, my, actually it's in the very first book, When God Winks. This is book number 11. Mm, the, the Christmas. I think I told you Dog, Dog Winks. Winks is number 12. <laughs> But actually, two of the stories that we've done uh, movies about are in this Godwink stories book. Uh, Godwink number one, which is the story of Gary and Paula, Paula and Gary. And, uh, and then uh, Godwink number two, which is about Alice and Jack mm -hmm. and their story. They're both in this book. But uh, the, the story of Joy and Eric in, in the book is primarily focused on the big God wink that takes place in the last act mm -hmm. of the movie. But Eric uh, is in, in, the, in the true story is engaged to be married to Joy. And they had met just as we play it out in the movie, they, had, they both were in different colleges and there was a recruiter who came along and they both had uncertainty about where they were going. They both had prior boyfriends and girlfriends who. So they weren't engaged yet. They weren't engaged. <laughs> no. And they, but that they, would not be good. but it was kind of like, <laughs> we'll see you after college, you know, that kind mm -hmm. of a situation. And the, and the, they both had mothers that were working very hard to uh, get the marriages going that they wanted, the mothers wanted. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so you had all of that kind of engineering in the real story. But so what we did is we took the story of uh, where the, the two of them uh, were, were both at different colleges and they went to this event which brought them together and they had finished their colleges. They were supposed to go home, supposed to pick up their lives and they met each other at this event, Joy and Eric. And it was a, and it was just a wonderful experience. They knew, they started asking questions in their head. Am I supposed to be taking that path or is this the path that I should be on? And there were so many God winks that were, mm. that they were observing. And, uh, and so as the story evolves, um, they, they go through um, these experiences and at the, in the final analysis, they they feel as though they have to go back and 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 finish the what what they had promised before their relationships and they were just feeling such heartache eric is in a terrible terrible accident and um and he is crushed by a truck that runs over him and in real life it was actually worse than what it was in the movie but mm -hmm. um but joy comes rushing back and she is praying with him she is with him in his uh coma and all of the all of the decision making evolves right then and there that they are meant to be together and and there is an amazing god wink that i can't tell you about oh but come on you have it to. is an amazing god wink <laughs> as to why eric lived mm -hmm. he wow. couldn't have lived most likely 
If it wasn't for this amazing Godwin. Everything and, had to line up perfectly. Yeah. Divine. It'll blow your mind when you yeah. hear what happened. Yeah. I, I, and let me segue from that to, uh, we have to do our bells. Oh, our bells. You know, people, <laughs> you, you guys know that people do watch parties for Hallmark movies like yes. crazy, right? Okay. Well, we found out actually on, on, Go, on, uh, on uh, Godwin Christmas number two, uh, we actually attended a Godwin um, uh, watch party and the hostess had handed out bells, a basket of bells, you know, from a uh, Christmas tree shop or someplace. <laughs> and, uh, and so she said, anytime you see a Godwin, Ring the bell. Ring the bell. <laughs> so we thought, well, that's kind of cute. And there we sat there and we were with this group of about 20 people watching our movie. And they all, and none of them had seen it before. And, and all of a sudden they all ran on cue. They went, hey, there's another ring. And but it caught on on oh, Facebook. It, it just went like crazy. Yeah. So, you know, last year there were many, many more. Mm -hmm. and people would have, someone said it was really cute. They said, uh, I have a party. I'm, I'm saying to them, BYOB, bring your own bell. And then <laughs> they come. And it is, it really is sweet. I mean, I, I love the community of Hallmarkies. You know, I yeah. love that, you know, we all kind of want, we want to see something good and clean mm -hmm. and we want to feel good. I mean, I find myself so often, like, especially on the weekends, if we're not working, just keeping it on in the background, the yeah. Hallmark movies, because well, it just calms me down. Yeah, and and we know that the, the history of the Hallmarkies grew out of the Hardys, and that the Hardys was a, just a wonderful, uh, you know, grassroots uh, movement that started with um, just loving uh, when, when calls are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got it. I, I always struggle, <laughs> you always with, struggle, with, I always that struggle with that title. You know? When yeah. calls the heart. Yeah. And, and, uh, <laughs> but then the Hallmarkies was an absolutely perfect idea. And so we, we have just always saluted you Hallmarkies. Yeah. You know? <laughs> thank you. <laughs> We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. Sometimes love needs a little push. Lizzie Shane, the award-winning author of The 12 Dogs of Christmas, has a brand new small town romance set in Pine Hollow, Vermont, where every happily ever after begins with adopting an adorable rescue dog. First love gets a second chance into all the dogs I've loved before when the town librarian mischievous Australian shepherd keeps getting loose and fetching her ex, the town sheriff. Lizzie Shane's Pine Hollow series has been called an irresistible blend of heart, humor, and a whole lot of puppy love. And to all the dogs I've loved before is available now wherever books are sold. To learn more, visit www.lizzieshane.com. That's lizzieshane.com. So there's like a Habitat for Humanity kind of element type there of service thing going on here? Yes, it, it was... Where uh, Eric and Joy were both brought to this one place because they were searching to do something more with their lives. And uh, Joy was going to nursing school and Eric wanted to be a writer and actually wanted to be a pastor. And but they were trying to find themselves and and they had both heard a speech from miles away. The same guy was speaking. They traveled. Yeah. He, yeah and yeah. said, you know, this is a good time to do it was kind of a habitat for humanity to clear your head and just to think and do something for others. And a lot of times God will work in that way to, to give you some clarity. So she, I think she in her heart of hearts wanted to get away from where she was in her relationship. Danny, Danny yeah. because she'd been with him many years, but wasn't yeah. sure what was going on. And the same thing with Eric. So that's how they met. And they, they did, they did. It was just, it's a wonderful, sweet story. And some of the other characters, like the father of joy is wonderful. And the mother and the doctor and his wife well, are wonderful. Yeah. Dr. Graber, uh, Dr. Graber and his wife, Katie are real life characters. Uh, Doc, they've actually both gone to heaven at this mm -hmm. point, but I first uh, interviewed them maybe 10 years ago. And so their part of this story is huge. very, very mm -hmm. significant, mm -hmm. very significant. Uh, the doctor's wife, Katie, became uh, a, 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 
uh, a, a not a, a girlfriend but a mentor mm-hmm. for joy yeah. and uh and 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 then the uh the doctor played a key role mm-hmm. in the god wink. that god wink that i'm not telling you about mm-hmm. but when you hear it you will mm-hmm. go hey there it is <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. This is the second time working with uh, Heather Hawthorne Doyle as director. Yep. Yeah. Love her. Yeah, she's, she's so great. good. Yeah. She's so good. And she just knows how to get the shots. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and I'm always amazed when I see the dailies, you know, she'll get, okay, that's it. Let's go to the next one. That's it. Let's go to the, I mean, she gets it from the actor. She gets yeah. the shot. She's got everyone in place. She's she, fabulous. She's very sweet. Yeah, and, uh, I love her. You know, she is. She has really uh, been on every call that we've had, every yeah, Zoom call, and great. so forth. And she just wants to be a part mm-hmm. of the whole process. Yeah, she really believes in the Godwink's mm-hmm. thesis and loves the Godwink uh, brand and the mm-hmm. Godwink movies. Mm-hmm. That's great. Did you, did you guys get to go on to set? Uh, this time no. we, we didn't this year because again we yeah. we had gone we had been in canada for the netflix movie and we had to spend mm-hmm. over two weeks yeah. you know isolated in a hotel yeah. and we said oh my god it was just too difficult well it was very hard but actually being isolated for two weeks with my wife that is not hard <laughs> Right thing you to know, say. It, yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, we work together. We're, we, we, but it we, was still difficult. Yeah. It was, but, you know, the fact that you are in captivity, like, <laughs> like you're really in captivity in yeah, Canada. You can't leave at all. Your you hotel. cannot step one toe over that <laughs> threshold. Sure. And we were in a hotel. All the food had to be delivered mm-hmm. and all the strict things and so yes. forth. We had to report in every day on phone. We had to. Uh, they were tracking us on our phone, our cell phones, to make sure mm-hmm. that we didn't leave the hotel. Mm-hmm. If we did, we would have a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars fine. Yeah. Oh wow. That's yeah. a disincentive. Yes. So we still- yes. <laughs> so so that two weeks. Yes. We we were productive. Thank mm-hmm. goodness for Zoom. Thank you know, goodness. we got a lot of things done. Yes. But uh, <laughs> but we didn't feel as though and, and that was then to be able to spend a couple of weeks on the set. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so we just we couldn't do it a second mm-hmm. time for this uh, this yes. Hallmark movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So what do, what do you hope people take away in particular from this Godwing story? Mm-hmm. Well, my heart is that people would open up their minds, their heart and their spirit to know again, if God saved Eric's life and if he did this, if he divinely aligned these steps so perfectly, then to just know that he'll do it for you too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the mission of every single thing that we do, uh, whether it's a movie or whether it's a, a story and a book or whether it's just doing a cup that gives you a little bit of hope mm-hmm. on the cup mm-hmm. is to spread a message of hope and encouragement mm-hmm. to everybody. You that's, know, yeah. that's what we're in this business for. And, and we're, we are living in such chaotic times yeah. and God winks are like a handrail on a shaky staircase. It's something that grounds you and knows that, okay, I'm going to be okay. I know that, as we said before, I'm on God's GPS, God's positioning system. He's looking out for me. And just to let people know that, and we're all in this together. 
but we are, we're going through some tough times all around the world. And, you know, I think that stories of hope, people want them. Actually, I saw something the other day that said people are, uh, I guess the the um, percentage of people wanting to see good movies, uplifting movies, and up here uplifting music has gone up exponentially since COVID because it's like, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to see a horror film. I don't want to see <laughs> you know a, a monster film. I want to see something that's going to you know uplift yeah. me and make me feel good. I don't want to see a movie the day the world came to an no, end. No, please. <laughs> wait a minute, we're living in <laughs> no, that. Please, aren't we? Really? Right. <laughs> yeah. oh, we need the minute. hope. <laughs> yes. We need the hope. We you know? need hope. And and there's something else too. There is a current, an undercurrent in America. And Jessica, where are you? Where are you from? I'm in Indiana. Okay, mm-hmm. so you're you're in Heartland, yep. and Utah, right. <laughs> you're still in Heartland, and mm-hmm. we are in we're on the coast, and 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 the, and that's not the Heartland. But <laughs> but when 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 people once asked me what is the faith market, mm-hmm. I said, do you know? Picture the picture the map of the United States of America. You know all that all that land in between the East Coast and the West Coast. That's the faith, the faith based, market. Faith, faith That's market. the heartland mm-hmm. market. And that is and it. So you can't judge the world by the mm-hmm. thinking uh, that are on those two coasts. Mm-hmm. You have to judge middle America, the middle America, what's happening in between. And and so what we're hearing from mm-hmm. people who are traveling those roots mm-hmm. in between on the ground, mm-hmm. talking to people all across America, that there is a hunger mm-hmm. for spirituality. There's a hunger yeah, for um, inspiration, mm-hmm. for hopefulness, for encouragement. Mm-hmm. And so we're ready to give it to yeah, everybody. Yeah. We'll just do as many God wink movies mm-hmm. as we can. <laughs> <laughs> we want to hear. Yeah, we're excited. <laughs> Uh, well, we have some fun, silly Christmas questions that we like to end our interviews off with. Okay. So, all right. First question is, what is your favorite holiday drink? Ooh. Like hot cocoa or eggnog? Well, I, or- I do like hot cider with the cinnamon stick in it. I do like that. But I have to say hot cocoa and almost all chocolate and very little milk because <laughs> I'm a chocolateaholic with the marshmallows. Yes, that, that would be my that would be my favorite. I yeah. Think. Well, mine would be the hot cinnamon. I'd like the hot chocolate. Yeah. But it gives me it gives you hot Yeah. I know. <laughs> so uh, the, the hot cider is my yeah. favorite. Okay. Uh, yeah. Very thing good. to hold or simply what i got in here which is a cup of hot water mm-hmm. <laughs> there you go um favorite holiday cookie or treat mm, well my mother god bless her she's in heaven now she lived to be 101 though so she lived a good life and she actually lived with us we would always make our favorite cookies for christmas it's called they're called pazelli's my mother was very italian Riccarello was her name and these are like wa- thin, thin waffle cookies. And there's very, a, very, thin, very, very, very like eighth of an inch. Wide. Oh, even not even that probably. Yeah. And it's a it's a Pizzelli iron. And my mom and I would have the best time because you do them individually and then you sprinkle them with powdered sugar. And then <laughs> she, I would do most of them. And because she couldn't see too well, so the powdered sugar would be all over everything. Yeah, she'd go like this. Yeah. She had all powdered sugar all over. It was over all over the floor. Things. Well, yeah. we had a blast. And then I would always tell everyone, Granny, these are from Granny. Everyone called her Granny in the neighborhood. Granny made these, and she would love to get all the praise. Well, oh, this is my Pizzelli iron. You know, I've been making them for years, you know. So it, Pizzelli, always, I always think of my mama. Nice. What about you, Squirt? Your favorite cookie? Probably Pizzelli's. I know. You know something? I like peanut brittle. Oh, you do? Yeah. yeah that's not I, a cookie, I, I, though. But... Yeah, I, I have two daughters, and that's true. One I mean, of them or the always... other will always give me some peanut brittle yes. to go in the stocking. Be careful as those teeth I get know. older. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. All right. What is your favorite Christmas song or carol? Oh. Uh... Oh, well, I have to say, okay, I do love the Mariah Carey song. Uh, <laughs> All I want for Christmas. You can't escape I, it this time of year. I know. I have to say, 
every time I hear that song, it makes me happy. And you oh, can't escape it even now. Yeah. Is that love <laughs> yes, it is. It's oh, love I love actually. that. Yeah. 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 That is great. It. But I think my favorite is uh, the uh, Nat King Cole Christmas song. Oh, yeah. that's a good one. Yeah, that is good. Yeah. 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 Um, favorite Christmas movie? Oh, uh, well, it has to be, oh, It's a Wonderful Life. It's a Wonderful God Wink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, we do watch It's a Wonderful Life every year, and it just touches my heart so much. I just find it so fascinating when it was Frank Capra, right, who, who did that movie. Yeah. And when it first came out, it bombed. Yeah. But then over the years people started really liking it. And yeah. now it's like almost everyone's. You know, it's interesting. Yeah. I just read the stats uh, recently on Love Actually. Oh, yes. And that when Love Actually opened in 2003, it only did 6.5 million at the box office. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was really a dud. Mm -hmm. But now, of course, it's uh, caught on like a... Uh, a Christmas staple, mm -hmm. like It's a Wonderful Life. It's mm -hmm. right up there with It's a Wonderful Life. And it's worldwide grosses are 289 million. It's amazing. Wow. And that's from yeah, 6 yeah. million to 289 it's just, million. It has to wait its time, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so which do you like better, Scrooge or the Grinch? Hmm. Oh, I like Scrooge. Yeah, I do too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the I Grinch is kind of fun, but yeah, no, I like Scrooge. Yeah, I like Scrooge. The traditions. Yeah, the whole Tiny Tim thing. Love yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, clear lights or colored lights? Oh, clear lights. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like the colored lights. Yeah. I like the clear lights. Yeah. And we do a lot of light. Our whole house is all about lighting. Yeah. Squire was in television his whole life. <laughs> so, you yeah. know, his background. You see, I want you to see that oh, the, yeah, there are little lights in the, on the shelves and all, all of our shelves. around. You know, we got yeah. the little uh, yeah, yeah. lights, you know, yeah. the little yeah. lights. On, <clears throat> and the shelves go. The bookshelves go everywhere now, in the house. Now, in case you think that's just in this room, they're actually, we have elevated bookshelves in five rooms. Yes. And they mm. all have these little, little lamps all the way around. Every time we go <laughs> somewhere, we look for a little, it has to be under eight inches, right? Yeah. For the lamp. Yeah. We always look for, so it's funny. I'll look at, at all my lights. And I'm like, oh, I got that. And look, Indiana, or, or I got that in Utah, you know? So <laughs> it, it is fun. It is fun to see yeah, all you these know, lights. I think the yeah. Indiana audience is for you, Tim and Harvey with the best. <gasps> you know something? When I was with Tim Conway yeah. and Harvey Corman, I must yeah. say, I think you're right, Amazing. Squire. Yeah. That well, they were the best. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Would you rather be in a snowball fight or build a snowman? Oh, build a snowman. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Okay. Yeah. Um, are you a good good gift wrapper or not? No, not I'm terrible. Oh, I'm terrible. I wish I have to learn how to wrap gifts. I'm actually pretty good. You're much better than I'm I am. Pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not fancy dancy, you know, like one of those persons mm -hmm. who can take the side oh, of the I scissors and yeah. take it along the ribbon and <laughs> yeah. go yeah and all of a sudden it oh, rolls yeah. up into a little put the little curly thing there, the... no i don't do that but i i can i can wrap it neatly. yeah he's good i'm terrible i have to learn that that actually that will be a goal of mine i think i'm gonna do that because okay he, all the you know the gifts of our i've already started buying gifts yes 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 those god wink bracelets that i do are out this we have year. god wink bracelets now. Oh, okay rustic, mm -hmm. Very nice. rustic, rustic cup, cup which are one of the one of the bracelets kathy lee wears them yeah a lot of and celebrities lot of wear and we've got a kind of a little everyday priced but it's it's still pricey it's about 40 some odd dollars yeah but it's beautiful but those are at god Go, gold com, and but, silver yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, it says love God. It has a heart and God winks. Yeah. It's just to remind people that they have God winks every it's day. It's again, you know, it's how do we remember about God mm -hmm. winks? Well, if you have it on your coffee cup <laughs> and if you have it on your wrist, if it have it on your hat, you <laughs> know, you maybe you can remind people to look for their God winks. Right. Last question. Do you have an ugly Christmas sweater? <laughs> oh, I did. But it was, it, it actually, it's even more ugly because the moths ate it. It was <laughs> oh, cashmere. No. 
And it was, it was really tacky. It had like a, a white fuzz and everything. I mean, it wasn't tacky. It was very expensive at the time, but it's got holes in it. So I finally had to, I just bury it. No. Well, <laughs> to tell you the truth, I am, uh, it's my ego. I could not bear wearing an ugly sweater. Oh. <laughs> so, so no, I don't have one oh, of those. Okay. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for coming on Talk Me This. This was a delight to get thank to know you, both of Rachel. you. And Aww. we're excited about the new movie. And and uh, do you have, you want to share your website or social media or anything sure. like that? Yeah, uh, it is godwinks.com is our home base. And uh, that pretty much has a lot of information about what we're doing and where we're going and what's coming up. And, um, and it's got information about the books. We always said you can go to uh, godwinks.com and window shop mm -hmm. and then go find it at a better price if you can at Amazon or Barnes and Noble. That's fine with us. Uh, we just, we're just peddling hope and encouragement. Mm -hmm. We want to get it to you in the easiest way we can. And then, of course, the, the little tools like uh, God winks and dog winks and and, your Facebook uh, and, page. and, uh, and, and the, and the God wink hats are all at when God mm -hmm. our, our primary social media page is Facebook.com uh, mm -hmm. uh, Facebook slash God winks. The one we mentioned before, that's, that's almost 300,000. And then Louise has a, uh, a group, a private group that is growing exponentially. Um, and that, uh, is uh, God winkers. Mm -hmm. So we kind of took that, we kind of ripped somebody off. <laughs> Hallmarkies. God winkers. Hallmark <laughs> God winkers. Hallmarkies. Yes. All right. And hope, didn't we even... have to, hope we don't have to pay you a fee for that. <laughs> You're going to have, have to sponsor the podcast you? one of these That's days. Right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, thank you so much. We wish you both a very, very Merry Christmas and All I look right, forward Rachel. to the film. Thank you. Same to you. Thank you, Jessica. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. We'd like to thank Squire and Louise for coming on the podcast. That was really fun. They're so sweet. And uh, Jess, where can people find you? You can find me at Jess BSW blog on Twitter and Instagram. And don't forget to BYOB for this movie. Yeah, that's Bring right. Bring your own bells. <laughs> And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So please take a look at that. And also make sure you're following the podcast at Homeworkies Pod and Homeworkies Podcast, all of our social media. And if you're listening on iTunes, please leave us your ratings and reviews. We appreciate those so much. And if you are watching on YouTube, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have the patron group and merch store, which are a lot of fun as well. And uh, thanks again to Squire and Louise, and we wish you all a very Merry Christmas, and we'll uh, talk to you all later. Bye, everyone. Bye.